Gurumila Mahagat Alaska here. Look, I have the honour and responsibility of representing my very able colleague and spokesperson in this area, Garrett Ahern, here today, Senator Garrett Ahern. So that's my function. Um, I join colleagues in expressing my personal delight at your appointment as a minister. Uh, I've known you on the back benches and worked on a few projects in common with you, most of them to do with the horrific situation in Gaza, etc. And I discovered then both your passion for the truth and your absolute sincerity as a public representative, and you didn't seek to take popular options. So I appreciate that, and I think you'll bring those qualities to the minister. And I hope to still go on working with you in this role. Um, I would start by agreeing with my, with my colleague uh, from the Green Party here in relation, to, uh, in relation to apprenticeships. And I'd begin there. I think I couldn't agree more. And I'd like you to give that serious thought, Minister, and maybe to respond to us on that, please. So uh, I suppose to begin, I mean, effectively what's at issue here is bringing the law and the whole process around, redundant, around winding up and liquidation into the modern world and really putting a focus as, and an emphasis here on employees as creditors and modernizing that situation. And as, I think that's crucial. Um, and I also think that we are talking, of course, of a minority of people who engage in malpractices, but that we cannot have workers back, victims of those. And I, I basically believe that the introduction of the employment collective redundancies and miscellaneous provisions and companies amendment bill represents a, a significant step towards strengthening employee pro protections and maintaining enterprise agility. The bill, which is based on commitments outlined in government strategy, aims to align legislative frameworks with current employment dynamics. And part of that would be the apprenticeship element, I think. Amendments to the Protection of Employment Act 1997 underline a proactive approach to collective redundancy situations, requiring responsible parties to engage in consultation, vital that everybody's in the loop, provide necessary information, again vital, and not to provide it tar in a tardy way, to provide it promptly and efficiently, and when it's useful, and notify authorities in a timely manner. And that's all critical. Furthermore, the bill broadens its scope to include amendments to the Companies Act of 2014, with the goal of increasing transparency and accountability during the winding up process. The, leg and that's, the legislation seeks to foster a fair and equitable environment in corporate restructuring context by strengthening provisions governing employee rights as creditors and, pro and improving oversight mechanisms all worthy and necessary objectives. The proposal to form an employment law re review group demonstrates a commitment to continuous refinement and adoption, ensuring that regulatory frameworks are responsive to changing labour landscapes and international standards, and it has to be an evolving and an evolutionary, an evolving process and cap a dynamic process where we can adapt to new situations. Uh, the amendment to the Protection of Employment Act 1977, as outlined in the bill, represents a significant step towards modernizing labor laws. Section 12's amendment to the mo mode of delivery for notification under the 1977 Act demonstrates a, a, a strategic embrace of technology, which is obviously welcome. The shift to electronic means, in addition to transitional methods, not only improves efficiency, but also ensures timely notifications, which are critical for protecting workers' rights. So somebody can't hide behind some long, winding snail mail or delaying exercise. Uh, uh, the enforcement provisions, particularly in Section 7, demonstrate an accountability, a, a, a commitment to accountability. The bill strengthens employee rights by imposing fines on those responsible for non-compliance, and that's a necessary exercise. It can't just be all covered. Section 7's defence provision 
which mirrors established legal precedents, takes a balanced approach, protecting against excessive penalties and, and upholding professional standards. Uh, Section 8 amendments provide an employee with avenues for redress, which aligns with recommendations for strong legal frameworks. So, that they have redress. The provisions for companies to the WRC, the provision for companies to the, uh, the work relations uh, to the WRC demonstrates a commitment to equitable outcomes. Fair. Uh, furthermore, the, uh, the proposed fines uh, seek to strike a balance between deterrence and fairness, and that should be the principles of all good, all good law. The ongoing dialogue among stakeholders demonstrates a, com a commitment to improving legislative measures to meet changing needs. Finally, the fines amendment in section 11 signals a more nuanced approach to penalties. The distinction between fines for employers and responsible individuals demonstrates an understanding of different contexts and different kind of liabilities in the business landscape and responsibilities. And, and as discussions continue, clarity on the legal mechanisms for fine recovery will be critical to ensuring successful implementation. And it might be interesting to hear the Minister comment on that. The fines are no good if they can't be actually got. Uh, and particularly difficult in this context, and adaptability in the face of changing workplace dynamics. The bill also establishes the Employment Law Review Group, which draws on the successful model of the Company Law Review Group. Uh, the ELRG's mandate includes a wide range of responsibilities, including monitoring, reviewing, and advising the Minister on various aspects of employment law and redundancy procedures. Section 14 outlines these functions, emphasising the ELRG's role in modernising and improving the effectiveness of employment and redundancy legislation. Sex, section 15 details the ELRG's membership structure, giving the Minister discretion in appointing members and determining the group's composition, uh, uh, which and they will include workers, employers, academic legal experts, and protect, practitioners from organisations such as the Labour Court. Um, and I think it's vital in that context, obviously, that there are union representatives in the context of employer, employees' rights. Uh, this diversity ensures a comprehensive and inclusive approach in dealing with the complexities of employment law. Now, Section uh, 16 establishes a systematic approach to the, uh, requiring the Minister to determine a uh, consultation with the review group on a twice yearly. This structured framework enables ongoing assessment and adoption to the changing trends and developments, uh, and so on. If, if for, if part four of the bill amends the Companies Act of 2014, addressing several critical aspects of corporate government and creditors' rights. One significant change concerns the disclosure of information to employees as creditors, and this is critical, that the employees have every right to timely information that they can use effectively and not given to them in any a, a slow way or in any way to put them in a bad position. Section 20 amends Section 571 of the 2014 Act, requiring company directors to promptly notify employees and their representatives following the presentation of a winding up petition. I suppose Section 21 is critical in that it authorises the court to consider the notification requirements, which I've been referencing a bit, uh, on winding up petitions. The improving of informing, uh, the importance of informing affected parties to participate meaningfully. And it, uh, it so. It deals with a union's concerns, expressed concerns in the past about a lack of notification regarding the appointment of provisional liquidators. The unions need to, the representatives and the workers need to know at a very early stage. They are the big stakeholders, really, apart from the owners. Uh, it proposes empowering the court to direct provisional liquidators to promptly engage with employee reps, thereby increasing transparency, and that's so important. Uh, there should be statements to employees during company liquidations. In other words, they should have access to financial information. 
and that's critical. Holding that back from them obviously disempowers them in a, in a huge way. So they need to know they're valid creditors. They have, in fact, they're the most valid creditors in a number of respects if they have a long-term commitment. So they need a statement of affairs. They need it to be clear and available. And I suppose, in, summar in summary, the bill is modernising the legislation and it's keeping running business smoothly. And a, a number of my colleagues speaking there, I think, both the previous two speakers, my colleague Senator, said that the important emphasis should be on, not, on preventing the closure and the actual liquidation and trying to restructure and indeed if part of that can often be the involvement of the workers. But uh, it's to prevent liquidation we need to be doing, but where it's happening we need to protect the workers and I think you're achieving that in this legislation, Minister, and it will certainly have my support and congratulations again to you. Thank you.